Hello everybody, I'm Gabriel Vinet, host of Cultivating Innovation with Tetra, adaptive tools for the farm and kitchen. This podcast showcases customized solutions for overcoming barriers for people with disabilities. Each episode puts the spotlight on a real life issue and follows how Tetra responded. Tetra has been building creative solutions and overcoming barriers for over 35 years. This podcast is a collaboration between Ingenium, Canada's Museums of Science and Innovation, the Disability Foundation in Vancouver, and the Tetra Society of North America. For today's episode, I'm joined by David Spear, the Tetra volunteer for the Pitchfork and Keyholder Project. The client is a cow and chicken farmer in Abbotsford, British Columbia. He is in need of this type of attachment due to a work accident, leaving him with only his upper arms. For the pitchfork design, David attached a metal ring so the client can put his arm through it without his prosthetic and lift the fork to feed the animals around the farm. The keyholder project is made of two rectangular pieces of metal. Small magnets are glued to them while the handle of the key sits in between. The client can insert the key into his tractor and with his prosthetic can maneuver to turn the key. Thank you so much for joining me, David. Uh, This is great. Um, I'm going to start off with just you explaining pretty much how the projects, both the uh, pitchfork and the key holder, sort of came into. How how did you find out about this? Uh, It was a roundabout way. I had done a project for a granddaughter of of a good friend uh, with spinal muscular atrophy who's only six. And she had an elevator installed in her home. My friend's son, who uh, is this little girl's father, Mm -hmm. suggested that we could work together because they do a lot of projects for disabled. It's a construction company. So about a couple of years later, I got a call from the construction company to say they had a project for Bob Killian in Abbotsford, and they needed somebody to design gate latches uh, that was the the start of the project and probably the most labor intensive and beneficial for Bob. So that was mm-hmm. where the project began. And I welded up, uh, designed, went back and forth with Bob and worked safe in a construction company till we finalized the design. And then I constructed those at home while uh, I waited for the construction company to install the fences. And when they did that, I went out and met them, and I just sort of chased them around, uh, working one or two uh, fence, uh, gates behind them. But while I was there, and typically at any Tetra project, because of our knowledge of all the different things we've done, I said, well, is there other things that you have difficulty with? And you know the history of Bob, and are we going to get into to that and how we hooked up? You can go ahead right now if you want. Because um, I've, I've had one disabled uh, BC Hydro employee as a, as a client about two years ago, just, at the on, just into COVID. And he, like Bob, lost his hands through electrocution. They both worked for Hydro. They both contacted 14,000 volts and it burned the lower part of their arm and hands enough that they had to be amputated a few inches below the elbow. So anyway, the occupational therapist said there were a few other things that Bob needed as well, and uh, we walked around together and saw that he couldn't operate his pitchfork, which he uses daily to move hay around straw for the animals. He has cows and chickens predominantly. So he figured out a way that would allow him to use his uh, the, the forearm part that's left, uh, hooking it into a ring that bolts onto the pitchfork. The upper end of the pitchfork has, a, has the loop in it with a handle so he can put his prosthetic through there, but the lower part he can't squeeze the handle. So this device had had a ring with uh, a clamp that went around the wooden handle and it pivoted in both directions so he could set it up 
comfortably. And inside the, the metal ring has a layer of foam to make it more comfortable on his arm. So he's found that to be quite useful. And at the same time, he had, I said, are there any other tools, garden tools like that that you need? He says, well, I've got a rake and I can't operate that. So I made, it had no handle on the end. So I made two of these clamps, put them on either end of the rake, moved them up and down until we found a, a comfortable place for them. Then the key holder came about when he said he couldn't rotate his arm because the prosthetic is mechanical he has to activate the opening and closing of the claws on the prosthetic by moving his arm forward but it doesn't allow a rotation at the same time he can't grab the key and turn it i decided to sandwich the key with a couple of flat pieces of metal mm -hmm. carve them out put some rubber on the inside so it would grab the key then it hangs down roughly four inches from the key, and then he can simply just push it with his prosthetic, left or right, dart yeah. or stop. How did you pretty much like think of these things? Like what made you like specifically do the, the pitchfork holder? Uh, in doing something very physical, the prosthetic doesn't have enough strength to say lift the end of the pitchfork. So he would prefer not to have the prosthetic on. And then when you look at the residual, that short part of the forearm that's left, we thought, okay, the only way you're going to be able to grab the pitchfork is if some sort of a ring mechanism, and, and then we've got to make it comfortable, so let's wrap it in foam. And thirdly, in, in the motion of lifting and, and throwing hay and straw, you need it to pivot in, in all directions to get a position that's most comfortable. You can imagine if it's on the wrong angle, it's going to bother his arm and bind into it. So as he uses it, mm -hmm. it can twist up and down, side to side, 360 pivot, basically. So uh, that's how he came up with that one. And Bob had a lot of input into it. He knew what he can and can't do and what he thought would be comfortable. Mm -hmm. And then with the key holder, we looked at getting fancy and doing an electronic start and in tetra we try and use the kiss principle for for a couple of reasons one it's generally easier for the client if it's not complicated but more importantly when you've got hundreds of projects out there that each of us have done the maintenance of those mm -hmm. would be prohibitive if if they were very technical and subject to failure so the uh -huh. simpler we can make it, the longer it will run without any kind of involvement of, of our Tetra clients to go back and, and fix it. So the key holder, okay. I, I looked at the tractor and the lawnmower to see where exactly we could put something to accommodate him with the prosthetic. And he was driving the tractor with his prosthetic on. So we then have to think of something his prosthetic can operate. And I thought of uh, something that hung down from the key that gave a bit of leverage side to side. Wasn't too long that it hit anything as it swung, but long enough that, that he had uh, the ability to push on it and start. So, well, I was, I think I began with the lawnmower and then I said, are there other keys that you have trouble using? And he said, this tractor. So we made a second one and it just keeps going. But you'd look around when you come to a client's house and uh, do one project and, okay, Bob, how do you do this? And how do you do that? And uh, it, it starts to grow and typically we'll go from the one uh, original project to I almost uh, seldom leave with less than three projects when I'm finished because most clients are not aware of what is available and how we can adapt it. Yeah. Thank you so much, David. Happy Canada Day and enjoy the rest of your holiday. Thanks for listening. If you would like to request a device, you can go to the Tetra website at tetrasociety.org under the Solutions tab and click Request Assistance. To become a volunteer in your region, you can go under the Volunteer tab and fill out the Volunteer Registration form. For more information, or just to check out what we do, you can look for us on Facebook under Tetra Society of North America. 
Thanks again and see you next time.